awesome. This tutorial is going to go over making the actual algorithm to generate our dungeon and generate it randomly. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my dungeon crawler controller scripts that we created previously. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a public enum and this is going to be the direction, okay? So our direction can be top equals zero, okay? Um, can have a left which equals one, uh, down which equals two, and right which equals three, okay? Now we need to make sure we put our, our bracket and within here the first thing we want to do is I want to create a public static list, okay? And this list is going to be of type vector to int. Now this is a cool little thing uh, within Unity that allows us to convert a vector to an int which is exactly what we want. So I'm just going to call it positions visited, okay? It's going to equal a new list of type vector to int. Awesome. So the next thing I'm going to create is a dictionary. So this is going to be able to map out our direction, our enum, okay, uh, to the actual position. So to do that, I'm just going to create this. I'm going to make it private. So private static read only dictionary, okay. And this is going to have a direction and it's going to have a vector to int. Okay, and I'm going to call this direction movement map. Okay, I'm going to make it equal to a new dictionary <coughs> of type direction and vector to int. Sweet. So within here, uh, what we need to do is we need to do an open curly brace and I'm just going to type direction dot uh, top, okay? And then we can have a vector to int dot up. And I'm actually going to do the same thing here. So I'm just going to copy this, get rid of the comma on the last one. So we can have direction dot left, vector to dot um, left, direction dot down equals down, okay, and direction dot uh, right equals right. Awesome. So I might actually change top to up just because that might get a little confusing. Okay. Sweet. And we need to make sure that we put a semicolon there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the dungeon generation data script, okay, and we're going to make this a scriptable object. So we actually only need to be using Unity Engine. And up here we can simply do a square bracket and we can type in create menu, create asset menu, okay. And we're just going to give it a file name and I'll just call it, uh, dungeon generation data dot asset okay and the menu name is going to equal to dungeon generation data slash uh, dungeon data okay now uh, in this class I'm going to um, call it from a scriptable object sweet, instead of mono behavior and within this we can just put in a few variables so I'm going to have a public integer and this is going to be the number of crawlers okay <clears throat> and we're also going to have a public int called the iteration 
min and public int of iteration max. Okay. Now, how does this actually work? Alrighty, so this algorithm works by having a set amount of crawlers as we defined before. So with each crawler, we're going to start at our initial room at zero and zero. Okay. And our, each crawler is going to choose a direction. So it could choose up, uh, whoops, right, uh, left, down and right. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, once it's chosen the direction, the room will be created and then it's going to choose another direction and it's going to keep going between a range of our iteration min and our iteration max. Okay. So it might go up just like this. He might go back down and he might go this way as well. And we could have one there like that. Okay. And this could be our dungeon. So once this is laid out, our boss room is going to be spawned. Okay. So whole skeleton and that's about it for our dungeon. So now that we've gone back into our dungeon crawler controller code, uh, the next thing we need to make is a public static list. Okay. And this is going to be of type vector to in, and I'm going to call it generate dungeon. Okay. And we're going to take in our dungeon generation data and I'm going to call it dungeon data. Okay. We need to return a list of our positions and we're going to iterate through each uh, dungeon crawler. Okay. And then we're basically going to uh, assign that to the positions visited and then we'll be able to spawn a room at that position. So I'm just going to create a list and I'm going to call it um, dungeon crawler. Okay. And we're going to call it uh, dungeon crawlers. Okay. And we're going to make it equal to a new list of type dungeon crawler. Now this will have all of our dungeon crawlers in it, okay? And what we can do is we can go for int i equals zero. I is less than dungeon data dot number of crawlers, okay? Uh, I plus plus. Now we can do dungeon crawlers dot add and we can add a new dungeon crawler, okay, with a vector to int dot zero, okay, so its position is going to be at zero. Now, the problem with this is we haven't actually defined a way to be able to take in a vector to int dot zero in our dungeon crawler. So what we need to do is we need to go into our dungeon crawler script and we're actually going to create an override void. Actually, no, we're just going to create a normal void. I'll call it dungeon crawler. Okay. And we're going to take in a vector to int of our start pause. Okay. Now we're going to set a position equal to our start pause. Uh, but we need to actually define our position. So if we just go just above and we can do public vector to int position and we can simply oh, we can simply just get and set. Okay, so now we have a position. Now we need our crawlers to actually move. So I'm going to create a new vector to int I'm just going to call it move. Okay. It's going to take in our dictionary and that's going to be of direction and vector to int. And I'm going to call it direction movement map. Okay. And we're going to call direction, uh, 
to move is going to equal to a random dot range between zero and our direction movement map dot count. Okay. So it's going to go through and it's going to choose a random direction and we're going to add our position to the direction movement map at the to move position. Okay. And then we're going to return the position. Awesome. Uh, we need to also make sure that this is a type direction. Whoops. There we go. Sweet. We go back into our dungeon crawler now. This will be fine because we've called a dungeon crawler in our void. And now we can set the amount of iterations. So we can create an int called iterations. And I'm going to equal to a random dot range between our dungeon data dot iteration min and our dungeon data dot iteration max okay now within this we can also call a for int i equals zero i is less than iterations okay <clears throat> i will plus plus and we can now loop through and check well, for each uh, dungeon crawler, and we'll call it dungeon crawler, in our dungeon crawlers, okay, uh, we want to grab a new position, and we can just set that equal to a dungeon crawler dot move, and then we can just put in the direction movement map, okay. And then we can grab our positions visited and we can add the new position to it. Okay. And at the end, we can simply return our positions visited. Sweet. Now, the last thing we want to do is go into our dungeon generator script. And um, I'm going to get a public dungeon generation data and I'm going to call it dungeon generation data okay I'm just going to lowercase this one and I'm going to grab a private list of vector to in uh, I'm going to call this our dungeon rooms okay so this is going to actually generate our dungeon and if we have a private whoop, private void start, okay. And we can just grab our dungeon rooms <clears throat> and we can set that equal to our dungeon crawler controller dot uh, generate dungeon, okay. And we'll just call that our dungeon uh, generation data. Cool. And then now we can just call a, um, I'll just call it spawn rooms. Okay. And we can take in our dungeon rooms. Okay. Now within our private void, um, spawn rooms, I'm going to actually take in an IE numerable of type vector to int. Okay, and I'm just going to call it rooms. So we can just grab our room controller dot instance dot load room. Okay, and we want to load the room start at zero and zero because we need a start room, right? Now, the next thing we can do is we can say, hey, for each vector to in, um, room location in our rooms okay what we can do is we can actually just spawn a room so we can just go room controller dot instance dot load room and I'll just call it empty because that's how we're gonna spawn it and the place that we're gonna spawn it at is our uh, room 
location.x and our room location.y. Awesome. So if we go back into our room controller just quickly, we can get rid of these because we don't actually need them. So I'm just going to comment these out for now. And if we go back in, so what we can do is we can go to prefabs and I can create a new dungeon generation data, okay? And our number of crawlers, I'm going to set it to 2 and we can set maybe like between 7 and maybe 18 rooms or something. And then we can just drag our dungeon generation data in and then it will spawn any amount of rooms, okay? So there are a lot of rooms, so we can actually go ahead and maybe make it like 12 rooms, okay? And I've actually got two crawlers, so it's gonna... So one crawled that way and one crawled that way. Awesome. And we can actually just go ahead and walk through all of these. Still very fast. Um, so the next tutorial is actually going to go over how we can get rid of the doors that aren't relevant because we don't want to be able to walk out here and walk into nothing, right? So we can get rid of those doors and we can also add in a boss room and maybe like an item room or something if you'd like. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave a comment and a like if you did and be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.